Good you. morning, everyone. Um, so building off uh, Brian's excellent words, he's asked me to take a few minutes to talk to you a bit about the process in setting up the working group on agricultural research. Um, and I'm not going to talk to you about all the, the activities and outputs of the group, as this would be duplicating a bit the, uh, the World Cafe session from yesterday. But I want to focus in on sort of the process, uh, the drivers, and uh, allude to some of the knowledge sharing and networking benefits. Um, so we initiated this working group on agricultural research last winter, last spring. Um, but I have to acknowledge there was a, an original seed for this, uh, this working group. In November 2009, there was a GDPRD workshop um, in collaboration with IARD, the uh, European Initiative for Agricultural Research for Development. And it was a one-day workshop on agricultural research for development. And one of the conclusions of that day was that, indeed, there is interest and a need for broader uh, donor dialogue on agricultural research. Um, recognizing that a lot of that dialogue took place on the margins of other events, um, the CG Science uh, or the CG Fund Council, or at the governance meetings of perhaps the, the Caterpillar Four research institutions, but that this wasn't necessarily the best venue for these sort of informal chats. Um, a second driver was the, uh, the GCARD roadmap, the Global Conference on Agriculture Research for Development. And one of the elements in the GCARD roadmap is about creating effective linkages between uh, agricultural research and agricultural development. And it's very clear that the platform is ideally situated to try to bridge these two communities. Um, and so started a, a two or three month process of, of conversations, emails, uh, teleconferences with a, a few key uh, donor members um, to determine their interest and willingness in participating in a, a working group. Um, and one of the models we looked at was the, uh, the ERD model uh, that coordinates uh, all the European bilateral donors um, around agricultural research for development and that it was clear that this kind of coordination was needed for uh, the non-European donors, the US, Canada, uh, World Bank. Um, the next important step uh, was to clearly link with a key partner. Um, whereas in the CADEP working group, uh, the key interlocutor is the, the CADEP Secretariat of the African Union. Um, for this working group, the, we identified GFAR, the Global Forum on Agricultural Research, as our key partner. Um, and I think this is an important step for any GDPRD working group, so we can demonstrate our value uh, at global or regional processes, that coordination informally of, of donors uh, with key partners in these, these processes. <clears throat> So um, in collaboration with, with key members and with GFAR, we uh, developed a concept note um, that we circulated for uh, a few months uh, to provide, um, to articulate our idea about this informal working group um, to bridge and then develop um, broader donor dialogue and agricultural research, focusing really on two key activities, um, knowledge sharing and then um, collaboration coordination uh, activities. So as of last spring, uh, we've been meeting um, by teleconference every four to eight weeks. Uh, we have about a, we've attracted up to a dozen uh, platform members, which we think is quite successful. Um, there's clearly been a, a core group of about four or five that, that log in regularly. Um, and uh, you know, we're, we're progressing. There's always a challenge of getting enough people on the calls, but that's, that's uh, I'll speak to maybe the challenges at the end. Um, I won't talk to you about the activities, specific activities or the outputs, but uh, perhaps some of the, the, not, the networking benefits. So it's, it's clear there are a number of benefits to members. I mean, the first, as I mentioned, the major benefit has been to bridge the Europeans, who are very well coordinated, um, with the non-European bilaterals. So it, it's been beneficial for Canada, US, World Bank. Um, we've even heard from our Australian colleagues that uh, they, they appreciate receiving the minutes of these meetings. Um, the second benefit is that it has allowed us to be better prepared uh, for a number of events. Um, the knowledge sharing uh, 
in the lead up to the G20 conference on agricultural research for development that took place in Montpellier, you know, the sharing of the content of that meeting and sharing of the agenda allowed us to be, uh, to better prepare our own delegations to this, to this event. Um, there was also a subgroup that spun off and uh, developed a session on uh, agricultural innovation at the IFAD Agri-Knowledge Share Fair in September. Um, and I, I don't think this event would have taken place had there not been this critical mass of donors uh, working around this, this working group. The, uh, the third benefit is, is around knowledge sharing. And as we've begun to, to, to share uh, our research strategies with one another, we've clearly identified a number of common ideas that we, we, we want to pursue. <clears throat> and uh, this has led to us uh, working on a, a where now we have a terms of reference and we want to commission a broader research paper uh, for 2012 focusing in on mechanisms for um, prioritization of agricultural research. Um, so we hope that this type of product will, will, will gain momentum as we uh, pursue the work of our group. Um, I guess on challenges, I'll just quickly touch upon challenges. The, the largest challenge really is finding that balance between keeping a, a light, informal, flexible group that can advance a scope of work that's beneficial to all members, um, but also uh, balancing that with not uh, encumbering our members with too much work. Uh, we all work 110%, we all put in that extra half hour to an hour a day. Uh, who has time to, to engage? Um, so what you clearly need, I think, is, is you need a committed person to, to, to chair and facilitate this group, to, to commit five to eight hours a month. You also need a core group who are willing to put in two to three hours a month to, 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 to read and, and engage. And then you have a, a second tier of, of members who, who, who plug in when they can. And that's really the, the, the part where you, you really gain a lot of momentum is when you have that, that second tier of members coming in. Um, the second challenge, uh, it's a small challenge, is the, is the timing of teleconferences. Uh, we're all in different time zones, we all have schedules, and so you might have a dozen people wanting to join a teleconference, but the most convenient time is only convenient for four or five. And so, I mean, perhaps moving forward, we, we should be looking at um, more of our work done offline uh, by email so that we can uh, engage with the broader network and not just the four or five who can log in at that time. Um, I think I'll stop there. Uh, that's just a bit about the process. Thanks. Thanks, Nikita. Thank you. That was great, Nikita. Just what we, we wanted. And, and I just want to highlight those, those couple of last points uh, about the importance of engagement of, of non-European bilaterals. And I think it's so important for the platform to recognize how we reach out to colleagues in Australasia and colleagues in, in, in North America. Uh, and that, that was an important uh, comment you made, as was the, the, the importance of being able to prepare for forthcoming meetings. Uh, one of the other advantages of sharing, sharing that knowledge is, and I really appreciate the, 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 the point about the time for engagement. Time is precious for us all as we try and network and share knowledge. And as you rightly said, the coefficients of that equation are a leader, as you said, four to five core members, and if they can put in some of the time, a hell of a lot happens, and then you can dive down into the second tier who'll pick stuff up. Brilliant, really appreciate it.